This video is on how to field strip and clean the P226. I know everyone has their own way of doing things, including myself, but I'm not going to do it my way. For training purposes, I'm going to go right along with the SIG owner's manual. To get started, you'll need a few things. Microfiber rag, CLP, a nylon brush, cotton swabs, a cleaning rod, a bore brush, cleaning jag, cleaning patches. You can also use the patch holder, but I get better results with the jag. You can get all this from your local sporting goods store, but it's usually a little cheaper on Amazon. I'll leave links to everything in the comments below. Always start out with an empty weapon, but of course I'm going to check. Here's how you do it. Press the magazine catch button to drop the magazine. Work the slide a few times. If there's any ammo accidentally left inside, it's going to eject at this point. Now pull the slide back and push the slide catch lever upward to hold the slide in place. Visually and physically inspect the chamber to make sure it's clear, and we are 100% clear. Now rotate the takedown lever to the 6 o'clock position. Now pull the slide catch lever downward and release the slide. Continue pulling the slide and remove it from the frame. Now compress the recoil spring from chamber end to muslin and pull it out. Remove the barrel. Now pull the spring guide out of the recoil spring. So this is as far as you need to go for a basic field strip and clean. You have your frame, your spring guide, your recoil spring, your barrel, and your slide. You don't have to clean in any particular order, but I'm going to start with the barrel today. Add CLP to the nylon brush and start scrubbing. Give special attention to the feed ramp. Now wipe off the excess CLP. Attach the 9mm size bore brush to the cleaning rod. Add CLP. And I'm only going to push it through one way, from chamber in to muzzle in. The reason is, it doesn't make any sense at all to push the dirt out and pull it right back in. Kind of like when you're sweeping the floor. You don't just sweep it back and forth. You'll just spread dust everywhere. You only sweep in one direction, either out the door or, or into a dustpan. Just make sure you're pushing the rod through, holding the handle. The handle allows the rod to spin freely so that the bristles will clean within the rifling. If you were to just grab it by the rod and not the handle and just push it straight through, the bore brush will just scrape right over the rifling and you may not get a thorough clean. And yeah, it's true, most people will just push the brush back and forth and do it the easy way, but why not take a few extra seconds and do it this way? This is the way you would clean a high precision rifle, so why not clean your pistol the same way? Now attach the jag to the rod. Add CLP to a cleaning patch. Place it over the rod and push it through the barrel, chamber end to muzzle end. Continue pushing patches through with CLP. After you've done that a few times, then try it with a clean patch without the CLP. Do that until they start to come out completely clean. Okay, this is my final patch without the CLP, and that looks good enough for me. Okay, I said I'd go right along with the owner's manual, but the owner's manual doesn't mention anything about a boar snake. This is just a little extra step that I take to be thorough. So take a look at the brass end of the boar snake. It should say 38 or 9 millimeter. Just drop the brass weighted end through the barrel from chamber end to muzzle end and pull it through a couple of times. Now it's kind of hard to show on camera, but this is why I use a boar snake. It comes out spotless, not even a speck of dust, no lint, nothing. It's like shiny black glass inside. Now I'm just going to wipe off the excess CLP. I'm going to leave a light coat of CLP on the outside of the barrel, but the bore is going to remain dry. Unless I plan on keeping it in storage for a long time, then it's okay to leave a light coat of CLP inside the bore. Now let's clean the recoil spring and spring guide. Add CLP to the nylon brush and scrub in between the coils. Now clean the spring guide. And wipe off the excess CLP. Now 
It's not necessary to break down the magazine every time you clean your gun. If you dropped it in mud or dirt or something like that, of course you'll need to do it. If you do need to take it apart, it's simple enough. I really don't think you need a video to show you how to do it. Just use a punch or similar tool and push that button at the bottom of the base plate. Slide the base plate off. The spring and follower will come out. Clean them off with CLP. Wipe all the CLP off because you want it to be dry. Reassemble it and you're good to go. But in this case, the magazine does not need to be disassembled. Just add a little CLP to the brush. Scrub the outside, and I'm careful not to use too much CLP. I don't want CLP to leak down inside these witness holes or down underneath the follower. I'm just going to make sure the magazine is totally dry because I don't want anything left that could attract any kind of dirt or anything that would cause the magazine not to drop freely. Now let's clean the slide. Add CLP to the nylon brush and scrub all surfaces, inside and out. Give special attention to the extractor, you may want to use a small end of the nylon brush to get behind it. Also scrub the breech face really well, but be careful not to leak CLP down into that channel that the firing pin comes out of. Now that I've loosened up all the dirt, carbon, fouling and whatnot, I'm going to wipe it off with a microfiber rag, then I'm going to grab a cotton swab, add CLP to it, and go through everything in fine detail. Run the cotton swabs through the rails really well, you'll see that the swabs come out dirty at first. Keep adding CLP to a clean swab, run them through until the Q-tips start coming out clean. Now that I've gone through the slide with the cotton swab in fine detail, I'm going to go back and add a light coat of CLP to anything that shows evidence of metal on metal wear and a medium coat of lube to the rails. I'm going to make sure that I don't add so much CLP that it started to run off into places that I don't want it to be at. So after I add a couple of drops where I want it to be, I'm going to go through the cotton swab and make sure it's smoothed out evenly. Alright, that's looking good, so I'm going to wipe off any excess CLP. And I'm done with the slide, now I'm going to move on to the frame. Add CLP to the brush and start scrubbing all surfaces. Yes, that includes cleaning the grips with CLP. Don't worry about leaving them slippery, that's not going to happen. We're going to use the CLP to clean off the grips and everything else on the gun. Then we're going to wipe the grips totally dry. These grips will not be slippery when we're done. The best way to get the CLP off of these G10 grips is just wrap the rag around it and squeeze. Now that the grips are totally dry, I'm going to wipe off the rest of the frame. It's already looking pretty clean, but I'm going to add CLP to a clean swab and go through in fine detail, starting with the rails. And just like the slide, when you wipe the cotton swabs through the rails, they'll come out dirty. Just keep adding CLP to the clean swabs and wipe them through the rails until they start to come out clean. And that goes for the rest of the frame as well. I don't move on to the next step until my cotton swabs or cleaning rag or whatever I'm using to clean it starts coming out clean. And once the frame is totally clean, I'm going to add CLP to the rails and anything else that shows metal on metal wear. And I'm going to smooth everything out with a clean cotton swab. Be careful not to over lubricate with the CLP. If it's starting to run off, that's too much. I'm just going to give the frame one final wipe down and it's time to reassemble. Place the barrel back into the slide. The chamber should fit against the slide like this when installed correctly. Now push the open end of the spring towards the muzzle end and the flat end towards the chamber end. And it should look just like this when it's installed correctly. Now line up the rails on the frame with the rail channels on the slide. Pull the slide back into the rearmost position. Hold the slide back by pushing the slide catch lever upward. Now rotate the takedown lever back to the original position. Press the slide catch lever downward and let the slide go home. Now let's do a function check. Work the slide. Pull the trigger, the hammer should drop. Pull the slide again. Release the trigger, you should hear it click. Pull it again, the hammer should drop. If it does, you're good. But I also like to see if it's going to lock back on an empty magazine. So insert a magazine. 
When you pull the slide back, it should lock back on its own. If it does, you're good to go. I made this video for total beginners, so I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll do the best I can to help you out. And if you have a moment, visit skullcrush.com. Thanks for watching.